Harry's wife, a less than royal narcissist, part 57.6. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. This time we move across to Dublin Live and they provide us with an article which has the interesting headline of Former Dicey's Garden promoter, Harry's wife, gives birth to a baby girl. This is quite an interesting observation. Rather than write Duchess of Sussex or Prince Harry's wife, it refers to her as a former Dicey's Garden promoter. The subheading reads, Harry's wife, who once promoted a two euro drinks deal on Harcourt Street, gave birth to Lilibet Diana Mountbatten-Windsor on Friday. Of course, the article has been headlined as such to make a connection between the fact that Harry's wife was involved in something that appertains to Dublin, in the city centre and on Harcourt Street, but also it's a rather demeaning title because it fails to utilise the royal title that she still continues to cling on to, notwithstanding her repeated attacks of the royal family and the hypocrisy that's engaged in, and instead links her to something somewhat below that which a duchess, that a duchess would ordinarily be involved in. The article explains as follows. Former Dicey's Garden promoter Harry's wife has given birth to a baby girl. Harry's wife, who once promoted a two euro drinks deal on Harcourt Street, gave birth to a seven pound eleven ounce daughter, Lilibet Lily Diana Mountbatten Windsor, on Friday in California, when both mother and child are healthy and well, Harry's wife's press secretary said. And with lockdown restrictions easing tomorrow, June 7th, this article was written June 6th, celebrations are in order in the Russell Court Hotel as they are set to open its doors to the public once again. The American actress has been living the high life in the States with Prince Harry and they welcomed their second child on Friday. But just eight years ago, long before she could ever have dreamed of being catapulted into royal stardom, the now 39-year-old appeared for revellers at Harcourt Street night spot, Dicey's Garden. An eagle-eyed social media user captured a tweet from 2013 in which she praised Dublin, shared widely on social media. It read, Dublin, you are beyond lovely, having the best day, and excited for a night at Dicey's Garden and at Crystal Nightclub X0X0. The princess has since deleted her Twitter account. She was never a princess, but there we are. But a number of replies to the original tweet from eight years ago is still on the social media platform, which seemingly verify it as genuine. The new arrival is a little sister for Archie, who was born in 2019, and a new cousin for Prince George, Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis. Not that they'll necessarily see much of their cousin. Harry's wife gave birth to her daughter in America, where the family had been living since they quit the royal family last year. Now, of course, this is an article from Dublin Live, and therefore it's going to look for any connection it can to the woman that's in the news so prominently at the moment, and therefore, no matter how tenuous the link is, it will do so. And, of course, it also demonstrates the fact of quite where Harry's wife has come from. Not that there's necessarily anything wrong with having humble beginnings or the fact that one was shamelessly engaging in the behaviour of D-list celebrities by turning up to nightclubs and acting there to promote a drinks promotion. Heavens no. That's a, an entirely appropriate ideal, isn't it? A way to live your life. However, of course, it's unlikely that this news article will fall apart on the desk of Harry's wife, and therefore its content is unlikely to challenge her. However, what it does provide us with is an opportunity to point to the fact that many narcissists, when they do manage to scramble into the rarefied atmosphere of some kind of status or wealth or celebrity, that they're very keen to leave behind anything which was which is viewed as beneath them. This will include usually friends, relationships. So, for instance, many narcissists will jettison a relationship or even 
forget about the existence of somebody who was deemed to be less than them, perhaps somebody who wasn't famous, someone from Civvy Street. Friends who once regularly saw the individual are no longer dealt with. They're plonked on the shelf. They have served a purpose at the time as appliances that were subject to control, that provided fuel, character traits and residual benefits. But because the narcissist has moved onwards and upwards, they're left on the shelf. And invariably, despite their attempts good-naturedly to get in contact with the narcissist, they will be ignored and left on the shelf. They serve no purpose. The narcissist, of course, has no emotional empathy whatsoever and doesn't think, well, these people were my very good friends before I became famous, rich, etc. It's only right that I keep in touch with them. Indeed, people with emotional empathy wouldn't even have to think about it being the right thing to do. They would just do so. And, of course, they would lose touch to an extent because of the demands upon them time-wise with regard to their newfound fame and family commitments, etc. That can happen to anybody. But with a narcissist, when you've served your purpose and you no longer serve a purpose thereafter, you'll be kept on the shelf. So even if Harry's wife, for instance, were to think about former childhood friends, they would enter onto her radar. The narcissism would ask, are they under control? We have no information, therefore they're not under control. First law of narcissism applies. All appliances must be brought under control and kept under control at all times. How will we do so? Will we first of all do so by way of a direct assertion of control, also known as a hoover? No, because it's not worth the time and effort. Indirect assertion of control? Possibly. But most likely, for these non-intimate secondary sources of the past, they are just they have control asserted over them by the narcissist basically deciding to move on and giving them no further thought in that moment. Control is asserted by staying in a position of withdrawal and the relevant appliance, the non-intimate secondary source friend, is left on the shelf. And this is the fate that meets many who were once involved with the narcissist when the narcissist has moved on to apparent bigger and better things. Former romantic relationships fall by the way are denied. For instance, where somebody might have been boyfriend and girlfriend, the narcissist says, but we were just friends. It was nothing more than that, or it was a little summer fling, despite the fact that they lived with that person for five years. In effect, the presence of that individual as a normal from Civvy Street is a reminder of something which is less than which the narcissist wishes to be seen as. Not only has that former partner no longer served any purpose whatsoever to the narcissist, their very existence threatens the sense of control of the narcissist because it's a reminder of where they have come from. And the narcissist doesn't want to be reminded of that because it's a threat to control. And so if they pop up on the radar, they have to have control asserted over them by either denying that there was ever a relationship to begin with or somehow diminishing the nature of that relationship. And that applies to family, to friends and to relationships. And therefore, as I've explained, whilst it's unlikely that this drinks promotion article and the connection with Harry's wife will come upon her radar now, the fact is that is a world that she will no longer recognise as anything to do with her and would be dismissive about it and would consign it to the annals of history, to the dustbin of time that it would be forgotten about and in a dismissive wave of the hand it's that was then this is now all narcissists engage in this behavior if they have met with the fortune or luck to have in effect made something of themselves whether it's fame celebrity wealth status importance their origins will only be utilized for the purposes of asserting control over people where it's necessary for instance, I came from a humble beginning, so I know what it's like to start the world with nothing. And that's part pity play and part false empathy. But ordinarily, many narcissists have nothing to do with the places, the people, the events that they once came from, because any reminder of them amounts to a threat to control. And this would be no different. No, not only, of course, has the Twitter account now been deleted, but the existence of this matter is something that, if it were presented to Harry's wife, it would be met with an empty smile and a wave of the hand and moving on to something else. 
either it never happened or there's evidence that it did, but I'll just dismiss it and move on because that is not part of who I am now. That world is rejected by the narcissist because it is seen as less than what they are and therefore amounts to a threat to control. And invariably, the narcissist will revise history to invent different beginnings for themselves, to erase, caused by their narcissism, to erase certain events and connections and occurrences to make them look better, only allowing their reinstatement where it actively serves a purpose for the pursuit of the prime aims. And all of the people and places associated with that history are similarly revised, deleted, removed, as it suits the pursuit of the prime aims. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.